And welcome to Habs Unfiltered, episode 155, the post-game uh, episode for game one of the second round series with the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, I'm your host, Blaine Putfang. I'm joined now by my ho- co-host, Matt Smith. Good evening. And Treg Wilson. Good evening. So a game, a post-game show that was going to be about how well the Canadians did to apply their game plan has suddenly shifted into a show where we are concerned for the health and well-being of Jake Evans. Um, I, I took a minute to think about what I would say, and I am still, I just, I cannot fathom what was going through Shifley's mind when he went after Jake Evans. Um, We're going to, we're obviously starting the show with that, with that dirty, disgusting hit. Uh, Treg, do you have any thoughts while I try and cut out all the swear words that I was going to use? Well, Shifley was looking for trouble all night long. He was uh, trying to start something with someone the entire time. Um, and it wasn't working. They, he wasn't getting under the skins of the Habs players. He wasn't, he was trying to do his best Corey Perry basically. And uh, it wasn't working. And now someone tweeted on there that it was a, it wasn't a, it wasn't a uh, dirty hit, but it was an unnecessary hit. And I totally disagree. It was to the head. His feet came off the ice. Uh, it wasn't even necessary. He didn't even need to do it. There were, there, the goal was going in before, you know, like, there was no point to that hit, whether it was dirty or not, which it was dirty. And he all. didn't even go for the puck. No, he just went straight for the body. Uh, he got a five minute charging and misconduct. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's Mark Shifley. That, that's Mark Shifley trying to... I don't know what he was trying to do. And then what pissed me off was the look on his face afterwards where he had this surprised look like, what? what do you mean hit to the head? What, what do you mean? And uh, props to Nicholas, Nikolai Wheeler trying to hold the people off of uh, Evans. Wheeler and the ref got in there too to, to, to keep the guys off. Props to him. That's classy. The first thing he did was when that scrum happened, Wheeler didn't grab anyone. He just went out and put his hands out and tried to keep everybody off of Evans. Yeah. Yeah, props to you know, props to him. Good, good for him. Um, Nick's that kind of guy. So yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, what can you say about the hit? It, it, if it's not a suspension, then the Department of Player Safety is just pure trash. Pure trash. Um, I don't care what his previous history is. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. The intent was clear. Matt, do you have anything on this? I just my two cents is as you said, they he didn't go try to play the puck at all. Um, it was clear the puck was already going in the net, and you hate to see this happen to any player, but especially a young player. And um, you know, Shifley has been in the league for a while; he knows a hell of a lot better than this. Um, you know, it's hard to say what was going through his head if he was just trying to fire his team up for the next game, but that's not the way to do it. It was a, it was a. You know, it was a blatantly obvious dirty hit. It wasn't necessary. The team was already you're, you, at that point. You were down five three, probably not coming back. And um, you know, as as you guys said, props off to Ehlers and the rest of the uh, the Jets players that actually, you know, took a second and said, you know, let's not get in a scrum. Let's look after the health and safety of this young player. And um, we just hope that he's okay. He um, he was moving on the stretcher, which is always a, which is always a good sign. Yeah. And um, like, God damn, it's like, it's, it's hard to believe, you know, two series in a row, two game ones. And we see a player from, we, we see a player go off on a stretcher and uh, you know, one was a very much an accident. And this one here is 100% a suspendable hit. And as, as you guys said, doesn't matter about player history. Like Shifley's a skill based player. He's not a, He's not a headhunter like this. This one, though, he made he made the wrong choice, and he's got to pay for it. At least he at least he better. Yeah. 
and, and it took a, a matter of about 30 seconds for me to post about the uh, the hit to have some angry leaf troll start yeah. comparing the two hits, the Perry knee to and the Shifley hit, and basically calling this clean and telling us to go fuck ourselves. Yeah. Well, if you just... find people like that, just block them. They are not worth the time because they're clearly doing it to get a rise out of you. And he's probably the same guy who has a video of himself burning his Marner jersey in his backyard. Yeah, oh, guaranteed. Guaranteed. Um, on this hit, though, I mean, he left his feet. He, the principal point of contact was the head. He had his arms up. His stick was up. He, he came in at his very top speed. He didn't try to get the puck whatsoever. And after an entire game of being frustrated by the Canadians forwards, I mean, how do you not look at this regardless of his previous history and not say this has to be suspendable and keep in mind too, if they do not suspend him um, as he was leaving the ice under escort, everybody on the Canadians bench was pointing at him and yelling things. So, you know, he is a target. Yeah. If, if he comes back on that ice at all in this series, something's going to happen. And the yeah. league, if they do not step in and do something, they have failed in their responsibilities. There, yeah. I said it. It's very, it's very hard to That's believe it. you see a guy like, like Weber's a, like, you know, pretty ferocious looking dude, but, you know, you don't see him that fired up that often. Yeah, he was pissed. Like yeah, he someone's going to die. Pissed. Someone's going to so, die so, if they let him on the ice. Yeah, someone's going to get seriously hurt. And, Edmondson uh, was quite angry as well. Yeah. Uh, and I like to get into Edmondson later, but uh, yeah. Edmondson was very angry. Like he yeah. Yeah. he was going after him as they were escorting him off the ice. That's yeah. how bad Edmondson but this, was. But this is the thing. Like we, 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 we talked about this in the last series that uh, when Felino went after uh, went after Perry, you know, Shifley's not going to go and fight anybody. They're not going to send out hey. Montreal, but Montreal's not going to send Sherrod or or Weber or anybody like that after after yeah, him. They and yeah, they, yeah will. they will. He he ain't going to drop no goddamn gloves though. Doesn't matter. Doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Right? They might they might go after him, but they ain't going to he, he ain't going to oblige. The code doesn't, doesn't matter. It's the code. You either right. do it or you're just going to get beat down every single time. Your right. rep, your reputation would be ruined. You'd be labeled you either step up and take your lumps or you may as well just step out because it's not just the Montreal Canadians that are going to make him suffer for this. If you don't step up on the code, the rest of the league is going to do it too. Corey yeah. Perry never fought Felino. No, he didn't. He like, he did not want to fight. He did not. He just but held, he held on. Shots. But he went and said, all right, Felino said to him, I know it was an accident, but I got to do this to calm yeah. everybody down and get it over with. And he Perry's like, shots. well, yeah, all right. And Perry just kind of hung on and let Felino yeah. take a few hits at him and then dragged him to the ice. And that was it. So before we move on, what's your, what's your thoughts on the hit uh, to do with suspension? You should be over there. It's a series. Yes. Minimum. Yeah. It, in my view, um, I mean, they, they normally have two games per it, it, a playoff game is worth normally two regular season games. This was so blatant and egregious if they do not suspend him for the remainder of this series, just say that. Just say the remainder of the series. If they don't do that, then target's going to be on his back as soon as something is going to happen. If yeah. the le- the league has to take care of it now and do it the right uh, do it the right way, or someone else is going to get hurt, and that you cannot tell me that the play- uh, the Montreal Canadiens don't have a target on him now. Not after what you, and you could hear them yelling when they were cameras were on uh, yeah. them taking care of, you could yeah. hear them yelling. They and, are livid. Uh, and livid. Shifley still had the surprise look on his face as he's going like, whoa, I don't know what I did. What did I do? That was so wrong. Like, get out of here. I am I lost, all re- I lost all respect for Mark Shifley after that hit. All yeah. respect. I, 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 I'm just shocked. Shifley, I always thought of Shifley and I said in the last episode is a top five center in the NHL, arguably yeah. top five. And I had a ton of respect for him because he, he played hard. He did it the right way, but this in one play, I got, I always seen him like a Gallagher myself. type player. Uh, he got out yeah. of your skin, but he wasn't dirty. He did, you know, he scored his goals. He got his points. 
like I say, he got under scan, he gapped a lot, he tried to, you know, but he never did anything. And then he does that. I'm like, what? Like he crossed the I'm massive done. line. Yeah. I'm done. Like he, he I, got in his car and drove across the line. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that as a Habs homer. Like you can say, oh, you're a Habs. No, if he would have done that to Anybody. anyone on Edmonton, yeah. it would, yeah. I would have said the exact same thing. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, so the thing that I'm looking at right now is if, you know, we can pretty much guarantee Evans is not going to play in the next game and he's, you well, never know, you, you know, and he could miss, he could miss multiple games. So Evans, the thing, Evans, this, Evans has a history of concussions. Yeah. Yes, yes. This is, I believe his third is a professional. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's his third is a professional. Um, and to be taken off on a stretcher, he, and he was out cold, like completely yeah. out for yeah. a solid minute. So yeah. he is, that's it. He is done for the season. I yeah. guarantee it. Yeah, more than likely. So the good, so the thing is with that, at least the Canadians do have someone that they can, they can turn to, 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 to bring in some of those minutes. Um, yeah. It looks like Lekanen is going to be uh, able to be coming back. Apparently he was skating and he's ready to go and they have yeah. Tatar and they have now, Tatar as well. Before, before we move on from that, I want to just, for all three of us, I want to send out our our best wishes to Jake Evans and his entire family. Uh, we we everyone's just beside themselves with yeah. what what we just saw. Um, all right, let's take a breath and get into the actual hockey portion of this series. Whew. Wow. Okay. So. The Canadians take the game one. They, they have a one game lead now. Um, they've extended their style of play from the Toronto series to this game. It was uh, from basically the entire game, the Canadians had control. I mean, there was a couple of moments where Winnipeg was able to break through the armor, but they, they potted some goals and Carey Price shut the door. Uh, so we'll, Let's just uh, talk about it as a whole. Uh, Matt, we, we know that there's going to be some changes in game yeah. two, but for game one for now, what did you see in this game? I just saw a team that was uh, making the most of the chances that they were given, and they were they were playing with speed. They were chipping the puck in. They were physical. Um, they were hit pretty much two to one um, when it comes to when it comes to comparison there, but. Uh, you know they were they were they were they were using they were using their the the tools that got them to the playoffs. And that's their speed, and uh, there was a lot of odd man rushes. There was hell. Shea Weber got a breakaway. Yeah, if you had right. Shea Weber, and which led which led to a goal <laughs> on a power, on a power Weber, play. <laughs> you have a Shea Weber breakaway on your bingo card. You just won. Yeah, that, that was that incredible. was uh, surprising as the Shea Weber wraparound goal last year. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, in terms of in terms of the game itself, I said this multiple times in our uh, in our other shows um, when we were uh, recapping the Leaf series. The defense had to come up and they had to play. Um, and just in this game, Petrie two assists, Edmondson two assists. And I know Treg, you're going to talk about Edmondson. Uh, Weber had an assist. Gustafson had an assist and an assist for the other team. Um, <laughs> But uh, but you know what? It was a it was a hard fought game. Uh, a lot of people did not give the Canadians a chance coming in off of uh, was it seven games in twelve 13, nights? Oh, this was eight, eight eight. This is their eighth game in twelve nights or thirteen nights or something like yeah, that. Thirteen. Um, good on good on them. They uh, they went out. They performed. Um, the veterans the veterans played well. The young kids played well. Carey Price played well. The defense showed up. It was a very questionable roughing call on Kotkaniemi that I'm still shaking my head about. But um, all in all, a very solid game one for the Canadians. And um, let's just hope that, uh, that Jake Evans is okay, as we, as we mentioned, too, at the start of the, at the, start of the show. And um, let's, uh, let's bring on game two. Uh, Treg, you, you wanted to talk about Edmondson. Uh, Joel, that was probably the best game I've watched uh, Joel Edmondson play this season. Yep. He... Uh, I'm telling you, you know what? All season, this guy has been an unsung hero for the Montreal Canadiens. 
a lot of people at the first of the season thought this signing was the worst sign. It was another Carl Alsner. They thought it was the worst signing, but he's been the most consistent, steady defenseman. Steady Eddie is what people are calling defenseman uh, all season. In this game tonight, man, even Chris Cuthbert and Craig Simpson were saying the eye-hand coordination on this guy, knocking the pucks out of the sky. Uh, the passes and shots he was taking in the zone, like just finding the open man. The pass to, uh, was it Suzuki that went in on the break? Uh, um, for the second the two goal, on the two on one, yeah, uh, Caulfield, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he froze up, yeah. So <laughs> that uh, that Suzuki goal was impressive. I mean, where he yeah. just took Edmondson launched him for a two on one and he just toe dragged him, toe dragged Hellebuck. It was a thing of beauty. Uh, Kotkaniemi with that amazing little tap in on that gorgeous slap pass from Jeff Petrie, yeah. and you're right it's the defense that stepped up in this game that Very made so. the difference offensively yeah. um, the canadians were able to funnel the jets along the boards and the jets out hit the canadians but the canadians were not afraid physically they were taking the hits to make the plays yeah. and it, it was it was very difficult for uh, for the jets to uh, create any kind of zone uh, zone time and offensive zone time I mean, their goals that they got, uh, they had the, the breakaway on the shorthanded goal. Um, <clears throat> Forbort's goal, uh, that was a bit of a later, they couldn't clear the zone and it was a, a bit of a long shift. It was a screen. And, it was, he was screened. And he was screened. Right. Um, but the goal, uh, by not clearing the zone and by being stuck in your, uh, stuck on the ice a little too long, that, that paid off for Winnipeg. Yep. Um and that cross ice pass from Ehlers to uh, uh, not to, a lot of people are going to stop that one. No, no, uh, no. That was a perfect shot uh, by Connor. Yeah. So, um, I mean, other than a couple of little things that they need to clean up, the Canadians played an, an excellent hockey game. They did. And um, with, uh, with Gustafson, we, we talked about defense quite a bit in the last series. We're already talking about it in this series. Yeah. So he made that mistake on yeah. the power play led to a goal. He played 641 total. Is this finally the time we're going to see Romanov in the lineup? You would think. With, I mean, with, the, with, with, with the physicality that's now going to be put into this series, that's going to be injected into this series. I, I would have had Romanov in about four games ago, but yeah. they keep going with Gustafson. I mean, yeah, he, he's not going to change a winning lineup. You know, yeah. that, that lineup won a game seven. Yeah. So I get it. You're not going to change that. But now, after yeah. that mistake, in the lack and of ice time. And this isn't the first time he's done something like this. No, right? no, no. Right. So you, you got to give Romanov his chance. You got yeah. to. Yeah. And for, to, to come in for Evans, I mean, you talk about Lekkonen being possible. Yeah, Lekkonen uh, or Tatar. Tatar yeah. is available. Um, which, which would make, which would, which would make perfect sense. He would go yeah. back to that line. And he's, yeah. he's, he's talked about, he's talked about that line, him being in the lineup, him not being in the lineup. Um, Maybe it will give him a little, bit, a little bit of a spark. Maybe you, you never, you never know with that. That's true. That's true. Um, but I'm looking for the veterans of this team to really step up in game two. Uh, they, yeah, they, especially they, you know, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I and, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not talking about going on, going and take the head off of another no, play no, no. or anything like that. Yeah. I'm just talking about you know biting down your mouthpiece and just you know going hard to the net and you know, winning, winning on the scoreboard and not having to take another player out on a stretch. Right. right. Try and focus. You might, on you, might you might want, you might want to, but I, I think they're, I think they're better people than that. I, I think the bigger revenge in, in this would be coming back with a, uh, with a two, nothing lead coming back to Montreal yeah. with a two, nothing yeah. lead. Yeah. So they got to focus on the hockey aspect and not the revenge aspect. Yeah. Just realize that the physical, if physical play is going to go up. I mean, uh, hey, welcome back, Treg. So lost, yeah, so Mark Dumont back. was joking about trying to build some kind of a rivalry before the game because there wasn't much of one between these two teams, despite the nine games. Yeah, I, I think that's been taken care of. I think so too. Yeah. I don't know how much you got of my Edmondson thing, but all I was trying to say was <laughs> Edmondson had a great game. And Wait, he's, he played very well. He's undervalued. <laughs> we we explained the 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 breakout and all that. Yeah. But yeah. um, yeah. And, you know, it'd be nice if Sportsnet got uh, Carey Price's name right once in a while. Corey Price? Or... Corey Price or, or K- Carey Perry. 
Carrie Perry. <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. I know it's not the Leafs, but you know, the did game you like cards how it's in your hand? Hey, they tried as much as they could, though. Anytime they could bring up Dino Matthews or I, throw I, in Rocket Richard or anything like that. Oh, yeah. I was they just going to say so, they, they used Dino to bring up Matthews because they, they used, oh, he played so well against Matthews, who was won the Rocket Richard award in the regular season. They only yeah. held him to one goal. And yeah. yeah, he was an amazing regular season player. Yeah. Never ends. And for <laughs> and Leaf, for the Leaf troll that's still watching, regular season and welcome to the second round. Something you <laughs> will not see. That's why I'll never go drinking with Austin Matthews. He never sticks around for the second round. <laughs> uh, all right. So enough Leaf jokes. Their their, their fan base is uh, burning burning jerseys and stuff. So they're they're in it they're in it pretty hard. So. Yeah. Yeah, I pick on the Leaf Trolls, but there's a ton of really good Leaf fans that we follow. Oh, guys like time. from the Offside crew, those guys are amazing. So you check them out, give them a follow. They're definitely worth it. Um, Jeremy Ridgewell, Fulton Reed, a couple other guys. Bring yeah, them. absolutely, absolutely. Um, so back to this, back to this series. Uh, we were talking about replacements and what's going to happen in the next uh, <clears throat> in the next game and the mainly the focus is hockey we got to focus on yep. the team has to focus on winning yep that's the revenge i think romano should come in for gustus and gustin had a terrible yep. game tonight yeah, yeah we, we, brought, we, we mentioned brought that, that up when you were gone oh, yeah. now okay. who would you put in for for evans now that evans is clearly going to be out of the series do you bring tatar or do you bring in lekanen i bring in lekanen lekanen is going to bring the same style of hockey yep. that uh that Evans brought, brings in. I hate the fact you missed that second center on that top line case because yeah. we always seem to get kicked out of the faceoff circle. Um, but I, I'd bring in Lekin. Same style of stay, same style of game as Evans. Little bit more of a scoring touch to him, and uh, if he can hit the net, and uh, yeah, that's who I bring in. <clears throat> and and uh, he's a natural winger. So yeah. So another uh, a big thing from the Leaf series that has translated to this one, the power play. The power play was able to produce a goal, yep. and one against thanks to Gustafson. But they scored, and it was Gallagher, and it was the most Gallagher goal that you can think. Um, and uh, all of the, pretty much all of the Habs goals were within a couple of feet of the net because they kept going to the net. And that's that's going to be a key in this series. If they can continue to do that in games two and on, they're going to have success. Yeah. Well, you're not going to be a heli buck from far out. No, and you have to get them moving and you have to get yeah. rebounds. Uh, but you he, no close in, he is, I mean, that... Uh, that's a Suzuki the, goal. The Suzuki goal. Uh, the, the Gallagher goal, he thought he had in his pads and he didn't. Yeah. Uh, but you, like you said, it's a Gallagher goal. Uh, I thought the power play looked good even when they didn't score. However, uh, Suzuki and Caulfield and Petrie, Petrie got to start pass. There was a couple times Caulfield was wide open for that shot, and he chose to put it to the other side. I don't know why. He looked at him and then just didn't give it to him. Also, um, Yeah, but Caulfield also has to stop deferring to everybody else. He has to correct. start shooting. Yeah, he's uh, not I, shooting as much. I was yeah. just about to say that, and I said Caulfield got to start. tonight. He, I thought he played an excellent game. He did, uh, he did. but he just uh, for, for me, it's for uh, some for, reason wanted to pass the puck all the time. Yeah, for me, it's the one move he has coming over the blue line where he drags it and tries to go through down the center. I think uh, I think he's going to do that one too many times, and someone's going to pop him. I think he's too used to doing it in the NCAA I think so too. I think so and getting too. away with it, yeah. and then he's going to realize in the NHL that's not as easy as it was. In the NCAA, yeah. So. so I wouldn't want to see him get popped. And like they've got Forbert, they got Stanley, they got some big boys on the back end. And well, yeah. Grant McCag made a good point. He goes, every time we see Caulfield, we think he's going to get hit along the boards. We think he's going to get yeah. hit, but he yeah. always ends up coming out with the puck. Yeah, but this is and this not is, being touched. Yeah, but so. this is clean. This is like center. Yeah, and when he <laughs> when he's attacking the net, he, he makes that little move. You know, he tries to yeah. do a juke move. Yep. where he goes inside, outside, back, back, outside yep. to kind of create that little bit of space so he can get his shot off. He, that worked every time in the NCAA, but that's not going to work in the uh, the NHL. So it's, oh, you can tell us con his confidence, quick release. his confidence is growing right? game, yes. game after yes. game. And, and the confidence, 
I, I just think – so his confidence is growing. The players around him, their confidence in him needs to continue to grow because we've seen the shot that he has. He's wired how many posts now this postseason. Um, I think, it's, you know, the sky's the limit for this kid. I will say this too. Descharm's coaching a lot better as the uh, playoffs have been going on. Yeah. So, uh, and yeah. Uh, this is the first time all season that Montreal's won four games in a row. No, oh, I took the playoffs. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. So I think we've pretty much exhausted the first game and what we're, I'm expecting some fireworks in game two. Yeah. Um, I so, think it depends on if Shifle's there, Shifley's there or not. If he's not there, I don't think you're going to see the fireworks. Oh, I don't think it matters at this point. Uh, if Shifley's there, yeah. things are going to get out of hand. Yeah. But I think the, I think there's going to be some retribution in some, it may a fight, something. something. Because, I mean, Winnipeg's already down. Uh, Shifley. Tamello uh, uh, hurt himself. Tamello, Shifley, and Statsny. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like Statsny will probably be back the next game. Yeah. But Shifley's a big... Uh, Oh, he's, yeah, he's a big part of their team. Yeah. So, um, so this is going to come out uh, in the morning of June 3rd. Uh, so we hope you enjoy it. Uh, we're going to have John Liu with us for our next episode. We're going to be recording that tomorrow. And, uh, we're going to have a whole ton to talk about now. Uh, I mean, John being the Winnipeg native, we're going to just kind of, you know, hit him up a little bit with some, some fun stuff, but now there's some, there's some juicy bits that we can, we're going to have to hit him on. Um, so thank you for listening. We appreciate all the support you guys have been giving us, especially in the playoffs when we're putting in a lot of extra work and a lot of extra time to create more content and putting it out there. Um, uh, Matt, you got something. Speaking of John Lou, he just tweeted this out from Joel Edmondson, who we've talked about a few times on this. Um, he said, um, Shifley hit on Evans. It was a dirty hit, but the league's going to take care of it. If he gets back in this series, we're going to make his life miserable. I mean, th- he's, he's being nice. Yeah. Oh, that's Edmondson saying to the NHL and NHL player safety, you better do your job yeah. or we're going to do it for you. Yeah. And it's not going to be pretty. Yeah. If, uh, if the NHL player, if the uh, if player safety is not willing to take it seriously, the players will, I mean, yeah. in a vacuum, the players will fill that vacuum and they will, they will police themselves. Now, my only worry is that the Habs are going to go out head hunting next game yeah. and, get too yeah. many penalties that's my own the, the, yeah they have to be careful not to yeah. fall into that trap uh yeah. the person who did it is the one that you have to make stand up to the code the rest of the guys on that uh, on that lineup just just play them hard that's yeah. it yeah. and I'll, I'll throw in one more before i before i sign out um Kockney, and i'll bring up cockney emmy just because he brought up um he was asked about officiating and uh, remember again. he said right he was asked about officiating <laughs> um in the last series and he just kind of said like you know i'm you know you know i can't answer those questions right um so he said um this was his good to Emmy's comment he said i think it's disgusting no respect for the other players out there i'm not saying anything more than that we all know he can throw down yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah well, also on caught Kanyemi, he is one goal away from tying wayne gretzky and Sidney Crosby. Sidney Crosby for yeah. the most goals as in the playoffs by someone under the age of 21. Which is incredible. He's already second on the Canadians. He's under Claude Lemieux. Under Claude Lemieux is yeah. 10. Yeah. Wait, how does that work? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think that's for centers. I think the Gretzky Crosby one's for centers. I have no idea what you're coming up with on this one. Claude Lemieux to... has 10 goals for the Canadians for a player under 21. Okay. If he's tying Wayne Gretzky, one more goal to tie Wayne Gretzky and Crosby only gives him eight. So I'm assuming okay. that's centers in the playoffs. Sure. I or just... maybe they're maybe they're just lower on the list and he's right there, one goal away from maybe, tying them. Maybe. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I, I just kind of thought about that in my mind. I'm like, wait a minute. 
<laughs> these so this is so this is just this will the one that you're talking about is that one that's the franchise okay. history yeah. Yeah. most playoff goals before age 21 in franchise history right yeah but if he's going to tie Gretzky and Crosby I think it's most by center I'm pretty sure it but might, whatever it, everyone might it, be, yeah. who who gives a shit look at the company he's in <laughs> that's true look at the company he's in yeah wish he'd do that in the regular season well, at least he's doing it in the playoffs. Yeah. I know there's a couple of teams that, you know, maybe lost the first round would have liked to have their top center scoring goals. A wise man once said, you have players that get you to the playoffs and players that get you through the playoffs. Ooh, stir in the pot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You got, you got something else, Matt? No, that's it. That's it. All right. That's it. Okay. We're going to end the show here. <laughs> Stop putting your goddamn fingers up. We're done. We got enough. Sh- we got enough stuff here. All right, guys. So uh, I want to thank everyone for listening. Um, I will also want to, again, uh, send out our, uh, our thoughts and our, our prayers and our, 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 you know, we're just, we're reaching out to Jake Evans and his family. We hope every we, we just hope for a quick and full recovery for, uh, for Jake and um, to our listeners. Thanks for sticking by and uh, listening in. We really appreciate it. Um, I will, yeah, I, I want, I want to say promo codes, but I, I think it just cheapens the whole thing. So we just send out our thoughts for, for Jake Evans and, um, we will see you guys, uh, at game two, uh, if you were talking about it, so are we.